In this short video, we're going to work out some problems using related rates, and all of the problems are going to involve triangles. Here's our first example. We have a 10 foot long ladder which slips and starts sliding down a wall. The foot of the ladder moves away from the wall at a rate of two feet per second. At what rate is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall when it is eight feet above the ground? So recall, we came up with a strategy for approaching these problems. And in that strategy, really, I should have had a step zero before we started all of the other six steps. If we didn't have a diagram, we should always draw a diagram and label it so that we understand what the situation is. After that, we would identify what rate is given, what weight, what rate we are trying to find. Uh, we'll try to find an equation that relates those two rates. And then we'll differentiate implicitly with respect to t. We have to identify what variables are changing with time so that we remember to use the chain rule when we take the derivative with respect to each one of those variables. Then we'll solve for the rate and we'll substitute in the very last step all of our known numbers. So with our example with the ladder, I drew a sketch here. Here's my wall. Here's the ladder leaning against the wall. Its foot is on the ground and the top of the ladder is on the wall and it's sliding downward. So I'm going to call the distance that the top of the ladder is above the ground, I'll call that y. And the distance from the base of the wall to the foot of the ladder, I'm going to call that x. And what do I know? I am told that the ladder is moving away from the wall at a rate of two feet per second. So that would tell me that dx dt is known to be two. I want to know what is dy dt. when y equals 8. Now I also know that the length of the ladder is a constant 10 feet. So how can I connect these two rates? Well, I can use, with, since it forms a right triangle, I can use the Pythagorean theorem. I can say that x squared plus y squared is going to equal 10 squared. Now note both x and y are changing with time. Only the 10 is constant, the length of the ladder. So now I'm going to have to go ahead and differentiate both sides with respect to t. So I'll use the power rule, 2x, and then apply the chain rule. So multiply times dx dt plus 2y dy dt equals 0. So now I can solve this equation for dy dt. That's what I'm trying to find out, dy dt will equal, let's see here, I'm going to have a negative x over dx dt all over y. And I had 
simplified by dividing everything by two. So now let's go ahead and evaluate that. This is our last step. I know that dx dt is given. Y is eight. So now I need to do a little bit extra work here off to the side because I don't know the value of x when y equals 8. So, but I'll have a, a right triangle. Hypotenuse will be 10. One of the legs is 8. The other leg is x. And I can apply the Pythagorean theorem. I could say that x squared plus 8 squared equals 10 squared and solve that, I'll get x squared equals 36. So x is going to be 6. So I need to evaluate that. When dx dt equals 2, y equals 8, and x equals 6. So that would be negative 6 times 2 all over and that is negative 12 over 8, negative 1.5. And feet per second are the units. And it makes sense that it's negative because y is decreasing. Look at the next example. We have a kite. It's being flown in such a way that the angle the kite string makes with the horizon is constant. However, the kite string is being let out at a rate of five feet per minute. So we're trying to calculate at what rate is the height of the kite changing at the instance when 100 feet of kite string are in use and the kite is 80 feet above the ground. So let's draw a sketch of this. So the idea is that this angle with the horizon does not change. As the string lets out, the kite just continues to rise, but keeping the kite string at the same angle with the horizon. Now, we're trying to say, let's go ahead and call the height h. Let's say that the length of the kite string is l, and then that's going to change, and the height is going to change as the length of the kite string changes. Now, <clears throat> the person is holding the kite string at uh, three feet above the ground. And so uh, what is 83 feet above the ground, what we're calling H would actually be 80. And that occurs when my length, oops, is 100. So we can see that before the string is let out, we have a right triangle. And after we let the string out some until we have 100 feet of string, uh, we have another right triangle. And in fact, those are similar triangles. And so what I can say is that, um, well, before I, I start making equations, let's remember uh, our strategy. What is it that we know? We know that dl by dt is given as five, uh, should be five feet per minute. Let me check, correct that.
And what is it that we want? What do we want to calculate? We want dH dt. when L equals 100 and H equals 8. So to get a formula connecting L and H, I'm going to use similar triangles. I can say that 100 over L is going to equal 80 over H. And I'll solve that by forming the uh, cross products here, and setting them equal to each other. So I'll have um, 100H equals 80L. And now I can differentiate, or I could solve for h here, either way, but I'll go ahead and differentiate with respect to t. So I'll have my 100 h equals 80 l. Differentiate both sides with respect to t. And that gives me 100 dH dt equals 80 dL dt. Or, if I want dH dt, that would tell me that dH dt equals 80 over 100, which is just going to be 4 fifths. 4 fifths dl dt. And it turns out that it doesn't matter at what uh, point I look at this, no matter what l is, no matter what h is, if I evaluate that when dl dt equals 5, I'm going to get 4 feet per minute. All right, so this scenario should be a little bit familiar. We talked about this when we explained similar triangles, so we should expect to use similar triangles for this question again. We have a six-foot man. He is walking towards an 18-foot tall lamppost at a rate of three feet per second. At what rate is the length of his shadow changing when the shadow is eight feet long? Now let's start, start with a diagram. So his shadow is going to be eight feet long. The lamppost we know is 18 feet. Now the shadow is growing, so maybe I should use uh, a variable for the shadow, length of the shadow. I'll go ahead and use L. Let me change my mind. I'm going to use uppercase L. And then for the distance, from the man to the lamppost, I'm going to use x. And the 18 doesn't change. The length of the shadow is changing. The distance that the man is from the lamppost is changing. So what do I know? I know that he's moving towards the lamppost. So dx dt is going to be negative 3. Why is it negative 3? Because x is getting smaller with time. So we should show that x is decreasing by saying that the rate is 
negative three. What is it that we want? Well, we'd like to calculate DL, DT, when L equals eight. So the other thing that I need to note on my diagram is that we also know that the height of the man does not change. The height of the man is always six feet. So let's use similar triangles. I can say that the uh, base of the big triangle is going to be x plus l. I'll divide that by the base of the small triangle, which is just L. That will equal the height of the big triangle, 18, divided by the height of the small triangle, that's the height of the man, which equals six. So let's see how we can uh, simplify this. I would have x plus l over l is going to be 3, which means that x plus l is the same as 3l, which would say that x equals 2l. And after differentiating with respect to t, uh, that would say that dx dt equals 2 dl dt or dl dt is going to be 1 half dx dt. So my last step then would, would be to evaluate that when dx dt equals negative 3. So dl dt equals negative three halves feet per sec. Is that feet per second? Yes, feet per sec. So here again, I really I never you use this eight. I didn't have to use that that eight. It doesn't matter how long the shadow is, if he's moving towards the uh, lamppost at uh, three feet per second, and his shadow is shrinking, right? It's changing at a rate of negative three halves, which means it's getting smaller. Um, the negative three halves feet per second. All right. Our last example in our triangle problems is that at 8 a.m. we have a ship A, it's 100 miles due north of ship B. And then ship A is moving due uh, south at 15 knots. And actually, I want to change that from due south to due north. And ship B is heading due east at 20 knots. What rate is the distance between the ships changing at noon? So just to uh, note here, a knot is an abbreviation or short word for nautical mile per hour. So nautical mile is a little bit longer than 
our standard land mile, uh, and it is the more appropriate unit to use with ships at sea or uh, aircraft. So let's see what's happening. We have our diagram at 8 a.m. A is due north of ship B, 100 knots, right? 100 nautical miles, sorry. Then A moves due north, B moves due east, and after T hours, you can form a right triangle. And I could call this distance x, the vertical distance, and I can call the horizontal distance. Let me change that. Let me make the horizontal distance x. I'll make the vertical distance y. And then the distance between them, we'll use capital L again, the distance from ship A to ship B. So in this case, I actually know two things. I know that dx dt, that is the rate of ship A moving due north, is 15. And I know that d, I call that dx. Now let me fix that. For ship A, it wouldn't be x, it'd be y. dy dt is 15. And dx dt is going to be 20. What I want to know is dl by dt when t equals, well, t is going to equal 4. 4 hours after 8 a.m. would be noon, right? t equals 4. All right, and what equation joins these together? That would be the Pythagorean theorem. So x squared plus y squared equals l squared. Now I'm going to differentiate both sides with respect to t. So I'll have 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt equals 2l dl dt. And I can divide everything by 2 here. What's missing, though, is I don't know after 4 hours what the value of x is and the value of y is. But it's not hard to calculate. So let me go over here and calculate it. Um, so x after 4 hours. Well, we know that dx dt is 20. So that would just be 20 uh, times 4, which is 80. Now, why of 4? Remember, they started out being 100 nautical miles apart. Then A started moving due north at 15 knots. So four hours later, 15 times 4, that would be 60, so 160. So
dl dt would be x dx dt plus y dy dt all over l. And I guess I should finish this and find out, well, what is l when t equals 4? Well, that would be radical 80 squared plus 160 squared. That would be radical 80 squared um, factor 80 squared out. Um, that would be 1 plus 2 squared, which would be 80 radical 5. Good. So uh, for our final step, then, we're going to go ahead and make our substitutions. We're going to evaluate that when x equals 80, when y equals 160, when dx dt equals 20, dy dt equals 15, and l equals 80 radical 5. So I'll get 80 times 20 plus 160 times 15 all over 80 radical 5. Now, after I divide out the common factor of 80, I would have 20 plus 30 over radical 5. And so that would be, well, 50 radical 5 over 5, so 10 radical 5. All right, we'll do another um, couple of videos with related rates. Uh, the next one is going to have to do with things that are rotating.